now on Spotlight on Education, attendance matters. Just quickly, turn to somebody and guess how many absences you think a kindergartner in the district might have. The answer may shock you. The district's urgent push to increase attendance. Getting ready with iReady, the personalized program helping students increase literacy at school and at home. A local teacher hailed a hero for her life-saving lesson outside of the classroom. How what she does at school helped her save a man's life. And Olympic roots from green and gold to red, white, and blue. We profile an Olympic champion whose race for the gold started at Suncoast. Hi and welcome to the premiere episode of Spotlight on Education. I'm Rick Blackwell. Hi, I'm Claudia Shea. You know, we've reformatted our show to bring you even more school news than ever. Our top story, attendance matters. Yeah, that's the message from school district administrators who are trying to turn the tide on student absenteeism. Sophia DeSante. Good morning. Good morning, Precious. Every morning is a good morning for students who make attendance a priority. Why? Attendance is really important because kids need to come to school so they can learn. And unless they're sick, students need to come every single day. Well, you can learn every single day to get smarter and smarter and smarter. And if you don't come every day? You're not going to learn. You're just going to be bored, bored, bored. And being bored is just one of the many consequences of missing school. Kindergarten and first grade is, is so vital. I mean, we're talking about learning how to read and the foundational skills that are established in the kindergarten and first grade classroom are just critical. This is your reading class. Daily attendance is also critical for older students. We can tell you that the greatest predictor is attendance in uh, eighth and ninth grade more so than their academic records, whether or not a student's going to graduate. In fact, an eighth grade student with fewer than five absences has an 86.5% chance of graduating high school. By contrast, a student who misses more than 21 days has only a 53.3% chance of graduating high school. So we know that the only way to grow strong is if kids come to school. Superintendent Robert Avosa shares that message just as passionately with community members as he does with educators because absenteeism impacts the entire county. Just quickly, turn to somebody and guess how many absences you think a kindergartner in the district might have. They go to school 180 days. The answer? During the 2015-16 school year, more than 25% of the district's kindergartners missed more than 11 days of school. Things happen, but it cannot be something that becomes a pattern. To avoid this pattern, the district encourages parents to understand and share with their children the academic and social costs of missing school when an issue other than illness is responsible. Some of these issues could be student-related or could be parent-related, could be routine-related but it's important that the parent, you know, addresses each of those issues and reach out to the school for help if they're having trouble. Because really, the issue is quite elementary. Kids, you have to go to school on time and all day so you can learn. You've got to go to grow. This year, the district expanded or added programs designed to help elementary school students master reading and math. Elementary school students throughout the district growing with the help of a computer-based learning tool called iReady. The program helps boost reading and math skills. iReady assesses the individual needs of each child in order to produce an individualized learning experience for students. 33 schools in the district worked with iReady last year. This school year, students at every elementary school are getting ready with iReady. iReady allows us to really customize and tailor the child's experience in reading and math and allows those kids who are gifted and strong to continue to move forward while others who are struggling to have a little more time and be able to continue to grow at their own pace. Another benefit of this computer-based program is that students can continue using it even after school. Students can access iReady from libraries or work on it at home. We're doing great. 
Great Meantime, the district's higher performing third, fourth, and fifth graders are benefiting from AMP. That's an acronym for Accelerated Mathematics Plan. The program allows students to learn both their current grade level standards and half of the standards required for the next grade level. All this in one single year. This means that students who use AMP will cover four and a half years of content in just three years. This accelerated learning will help prepare students for higher level classes in middle and high school. Every day, students across the district are growing strong by reading thousands of different books. You know, but when it comes to striving for excellence in education, teachers and administrators are all on the same page. A plan that is outlined by the district's five-year strategic plan, and part of that plan includes the pillars of effective instruction. Over the course of the past year, the school district of Palm Beach County has connected with the community and with internal stakeholders to develop a five-year strategic plan. The district's new strategic plan includes several strategic initiatives, including strategic initiative number one, pillars of effective instruction. As our classrooms continue to grow and become more diverse, the pillars of effective instruction represent a clear set of actions that will produce consistent and effective teaching despite the complexities of today's classrooms. The pillars include all students are immersed in rigorous tasks encompassing the full intent of the standards, collaborating in a student-centered, personalized environment. All students are actively engaged in building, connecting, and applying knowledge. All students are empowered and supported through high expectations to be college and career ready. Combined, the pillars of effective instruction is the foundation to student success as we move forward with the district's overall strategic plan. The district's strategic plan places a heavy emphasis on postgraduate success. You know, it really does, and several high school students are now more college and career ready than ever thanks to their summer internship. You could say that high school student Bernardo Hasbeck helped reinvent the wheel during his summer internship at Mox Planck. I was designing a motor-controlled mouse wheel uh, by using supports and motors, and I had to code the motor so that we can control its speed. This mouse wheel will be used to conduct experiments. High school students also interned at the Scripps Research Institute in Jupiter, where they experienced hands-on learning in cutting-edge research labs. Other students also interested in pursuing a career in science attended Palm Beach State College's third annual summer biotechnology internship program. Students weren't the only ones conducting research and working with the district's business partners over the summer. Teachers took part in the STEM Education Council extern program at Wellington Regional Medical Center and other locations. Seeing the setting, seeing how the work happens gives me a better ability to explain it. Marguerite was one of 12 Palm Beach County teachers who externed over the summer. Teachers also worked with Florida Power and Light, Lockheed Martin, Aerojet Rocketdyne, in other area businesses. And speaking of business, the Palm Beach County School District approved the budget for the next school year. I recommend the school board approve resolution B2 and adopt the final district summary budget in the amount of $2,457,491,980 for fiscal year 2017. Motion by Mr. Barbieri, second by Mrs. Brill. Any discussion? Seeing none, we'll close it. Call the question all in favor. All opposed, motion carries 6-0. But the district says that budget won't be enough to cover critically needed improvements to infrastructure. Because of that shortfall, the district has teamed up with the county in asking voters to approve an extra penny sales tax. 50% would go to schools, while the county government and cities would split the remaining 50%. The district's portion would mostly be used to make critically needed repairs to the district's school campuses. Well, right now we've basically been, you know, duct taping and super gluing our, uh, you know, major issues together just to keep them from falling apart. The real issue here is that we've got a revenue issue. Uh, several years ago, the state legislature, during the worst recession we'd seen in 100 years, you know, decided to reduce 
um, our taxes, which sounded like a good idea at the time. It was supposed to be temporary. Unfortunately, it continues through today. And we've seen about a $900 million cut in what we typically would get to maintain our buildings. And now we're starting to see that where buildings that we should have replaced roofs or should have re replaced air conditioning units, we haven't. And we're, and we're seeing that now. It's starting to impact our kids in classrooms, and we're worried about that. The district would also use some of the revenue raised from the penny tax to improve classroom technology and upgrades to campus security. This issue will be on the November 8th ballot. If approved, the penny sales tax would expire in 2026. A very generous grant from Lowe's really helped an aging middle school spruce up its campus. Reporter Ali Strachman joins us from Krista McAuliffe Middle School with the story. Allie? Hey Rick and Claudia. Our school has always been great, but thanks to some new landscaping and a great new paint job, our school is looking better than ever. Over the summer, hundreds of lush bushes, sod, and lots of mulch were added to our campus. The landscaping materials were purchased thanks to a $5,000 grant from Lowe's. Take a look at some of the before and after photos. Most of the work was done by the school district's maintenance team because the job was so huge. Teacher Donna Gibson helped the school earn this beautification grant. Well, I came up with the idea to apply for the Lowe's grant um, because of this new walkway here. We need a new pathway that would allow the students to, you know, travel through the campus better. Uh, we started a project to uh, bring sod and bushes onto the campus. Over the summer, we had our whole campus painted. And the beautiful thing is when kids came back a couple of weeks ago, they were shocked at how beautiful the campus looked. And you could just see the enthusiasm that everyone had. They were so excited to be here and be in school. The beautiful landscaping was actually one of two major campus beautification efforts. Our 30-year-old school also has a new paint job. So, as you can see, this school that already gets an A in academics now has an A in appearance. Now back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Allie. You know, Allie and student reporters throughout the district will contribute to our newscast throughout the school year. If you're a student or if you're a teacher who has content that you'd like to contribute, please join us here at the Education Network. You can find out a lot more information about this by logging on to 10 at palmbeachschools.org. Last week, school board members paused to commemorate Patriots Day. Yeah, and honor the victims of the 9-11 terror attacks. The junior ROTC from Forest Hill Community High School presented the colors. The observance also included a moving video tribute. Many people in attendance wore red, white, and blue as a show of support and patriotism. This next story is also about courage. It really is. A teacher from Park Vista High School is being credited for her life-saving actions. This happened at the beach. Diving into the water is something this teacher knows a lot about. All right, Camille, you can do it. For Park Vista head girls diving coach Lisa Elmashi, she went from diving action. Boom, you go right over. See how much air she has? To diving into action. Honestly, I mean, you just don't think. You just, I just ran. Lisa was at Delray Beach recently enjoying her nephew's sixth birthday when she saw a man struggling in the water. You always wonder what you do in those situations. Well, Lisa ran from her spot on the beach and then swam 30 feet where she found the man unresponsive in the rough surf. When we got to him, his face, he was facing down. And so we flipped him over and he had blood coming out of his mouth. And um, he was purple. With the help of another Good Samaritan, they turned the man over and swam him to shore. Days earlier, Lisa had taken the CPR course required by all school district of Palm Beach coaches. You know, this one, it keeps it fresh in our mind and um, we're grateful for it. Lisa credits the course for helping her with the rescue. Thankfully, CPR was not needed. Because of Lisa's actions, the man was saved. A lifeguard came over and, and he said afterwards, you know, a while later, he said that, you know, if I hadn't gotten there, that the guy would have died. Lisa was moved by the experience of total strangers coming together for a common purpose. We live in such a time of divisiveness and people are taking sides that I guess it was so special that in the end of the day, we come together to help each other and that's what humanity's about. 
Lisa shows her humanity every day in class as the ESOL coordinator at Park Vista High School. She says all teachers make a difference. I helped save his life yesterday. How many lives can we save as teachers? Well, we're saving lives every day in the classroom and it's an honor, it's a privilege, it's a tremendous responsibility and we have to hold on to that. Yes, teachers and coaches seem like they are always there and they always care. Superstar. Spotlight just getting started. What do you do next after you've coached an Olympic gold medalist? Find out coming up in Good Sports. And you could call him the teacher's pet and so much more. See how this fab lab is helping to keep a second grader healthy. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm excited because we're going to continue the good sports tradition and tell you all about the outstanding student athletes and coaches inside the Palm Beach County School District. Talk about an outstanding student athlete. A 2009 Suncoast High School graduate recently came in first place at the Summer Olympics in Rio and today he's at Dwight D. Eisenhower Elementary School in Palm Beach Gardens to show off his gold medal. Here he is, guys, Tony McQuay. Give him a hand, guys. Hello. 18 years ago. How y'all doing? It was Tony McQuay who was the third grader inside a school district of Palm Beach County classroom. Now he's back at school at Dwight D. Eisenhower Elementary in Palm Beach Gardens with a gold medal smile on his face and an Olympic gold medal around his neck. At the recent Rio Summer Olympics, Tony and his track teammates finished first in the 4 by 400 meter relay. Tony was excited to share his accomplishment with these students. To look back and come back and share these moments with the kids is, is amazing. Um, to see their faces, to see how they look at you, how they interact with you. The interaction included having the students hold the medal. Oh, I don't want to let go. And Tony answered some of their questions. Are you nervous at the Olympics? I just release all that negative energy and emotions and just leave it all on the track and just be happy to represent my country. So by the time I get out there on the track, I don't even think about being nervous. I'm just so excited with so much energy to go out there and compete. It's been quite a run for Tony gold in Brazil in 2016, a silver medal at the London Olympics in 2012. He received a scholarship to run track at the University of Florida. Go Gators. The man to Tony's left is his former track coach at Suncoast High School, Carnell Coleman, the man Tony credits for much of his success. This photo shows the two together in 2009 when Tony was named MVP of the track team at Suncoast. He's been more than just a coach for me. He's been more like a personal friend. He's been a father figure. Um, coach Coleman has, has been nothing but positive for me. Coach Coleman is a role model to a lot of kids in Palm Beach County. He still coaches cross country and track and field, helping students to be the best they can be athletically and academically is his passion. Tony had never run track when he first met Coach Coleman 10 years ago, but together, their hard work produced Olympic gold. I told him, I said, son, if you listen to me, I promise you, I promise you great things will happen. I said, I got your best interest at hand. Now Tony shares these lessons with the children. I would say continue to be yourself, uh, stay motivated, stay positive. Um, when you meet adversity in life and the ups and downs and things that you don't have control over, just, just keep pushing, never give up and have fun with anything that you do. These kids will probably not be Olympians, but Tony's words will keep them on track to achieve success in whatever they choose to do.
From a Gator to a Seminole, Bach Middle School of the Arts principal Sally Rosansky is a proud graduate of Florida State University. What some people may not know is that Principal Rosansky was a four-year starter on the Seminole volleyball teams in the early 80s. She ranks in the top 25 in FSU history in a number of statistical categories. And recently, her old volleyball coach called her up to tell her she had been chosen to be in the FSU Athletics Hall of Fame. She said that I had been inducted, and I got this same emotion I have now. It was probably... Uh, one of the greatest uh, honors of my life, really. It really was because it's been such a long time, 32 years, basically, and to be recognized for my accomplishments and my efforts when it was really a gift to play for Florida State, I just, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I really am. Congratulations again to Principal Rosansky. What an honor. What a cool story, Rick. Thank you so much. Time now to head to Frontier Elementary School. That's where we find a second grade class where the students are learning a lot about chemistry and one important lab. Catch the Labrador Retriever is by Ethan Side at Frontier to help him with his diabetes. Catch can actually smell when Ethan's blood sugar level is too high or too low and then alert him that it's time for some insulin. He can tell if my blood sugar is high or low, but when... We're going to have to stop for it. That, that's not what we're Okay. Ethan said diabetes is rough, but having a special friend help to ease the pain is great. Whenever I'm sad, I pet him a little bit and then um, I, and then he makes me happy. And that's great because Catch is by Ethan's side all the time. Still ahead, our spotlight shines on Berkshire Elementary School. Find out what makes this school so outstanding. And we'll take a look at our community calendar and important local events that you need to know about. Stay with us. Maybe he's really focused. Hey, Michael. Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Welcome back to Spotlight on Education. You know, the Palm Beach County School District operates 186 schools, and this week the spotlight shines on Berkshire Elementary. Welcome to Berkshire Elementary School in West Palm Beach. This school is committed to providing a healthy, holistic, creative, diverse, supportive educational experience, empowering students to reach their highest potential. Berkshire Elementary has a wonderful International Spanish Academy. Children in kindergarten through the fifth grade have the opportunity to participate in this program. Half the day, the students learn in Spanish. And half the day, they learn in English. Or I'll eat you. The students are able to read, write, and speak in two languages. You can see when they're looking for jobs, they always ask to a language because a lot of people have trouble selling stuff when they can't talk the same language that the other person does. Also, it lets them communicate. Studies also show children in dual language programs score higher on reading, writing, and math tests. This school celebrates diversity. Berkshire Elementary students held a World's Fair where students showcased the dress, arts, and food of countries from around the world. Embracing the arts is a priority at this school. A dance professional meets regularly with every student inside this dance studio. The school also has a violin program where kindergarten through fifth graders meet two to three times a week and learn from a top-notch teacher. Technology is important at Berkshire Elementary. This is one of the school's computer centers. Every classroom has at least three desktop computers. The children also utilize iPads and iPods to help them become achievers. And the emphasis is on critical thinking in this science lab. These hands-on learners start with the design on paper. 
Then using engineering skills and their knowledge of robotics and electronics, they use trial and error to create a spinning plate. At Berkshire Elementary School, the mission is to develop young and healthy minds in an ever-changing global economy with 21st century skills. Teachers do this by providing a nurturing, diverse, and inclusive community where all stakeholders are valued. The School District of Palm Beach County, your best choice. You know, there are lots and lots of activities going on throughout the district and throughout our community. Let's check out this week's community calendar. Boynton Beach High School is sponsoring the Boynton Youth Matter Movement Community Boot Camp. This event will take place in the school's gym on September 24th. Registration begins at 9 a.m. and the event runs until 11 a.m. Call 561-702-8956 for more information. Parents and students are invited to the school district's showcase of schools. This is your opportunity to learn all about the schools throughout the district and their career and choice programs. Join us October 18th from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Expo Center at the South Florida Fairgrounds. Jupiter Community High School is holding its annual college fair on October 19th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. More than 100 colleges and universities will be represented. If you have a story you'd like us to cover or an event you'd like us to add to the calendar, please contact us at goodnews at palmbeachschools.org. And that's it for this edition of Spotlight on Education. Brought to you by the Education Network, keeping you informed.